Good morning, honorable members, and those under the sound of my voice. I echo the words of the psalmist in declaring, the Lord reigneth, let the earth rejoice, let the multitudes of the isles be glad thereof. In our Moments of Impact devotional segment today, I'll be sharing a devotional entitled, Dogs Don't Bark at Park Cars. The popular Bahamian song, Dogs Don't Bark at Park Cars, was written and sung to convey a message of how many people in the world today have a difficult time celebrating the progress and success of others. There are some people as long as nothing is happening in your life and you remain stagnant or in a deprived condition, they will have nothing to say to you or pay no attention to you. However, as soon as you begin to make progress and try to make something out of your life, all of a sudden, the opposers come out of the woodworks and seek to discourage you rather than encourage you and seek to pull you down instead and push you up. When you see this type of action taking place by your opposers, let this be a sign of confirmation that you're doing something right and moving in the right direction because dogs don't bar at park cars. I recall a story in the book of Mark chapter 10 verses 46 to 52, about a blind man named Bartimaeus. And it reads, in verse 46, Then they reached Jericho, and as Jesus and his disciples left town, a large crowd followed him. A blind beggar by the name of Bartimaeus was sitting by the roadside. And Bartimaeus heard that Jesus of Nazareth was passing by. He began to shout, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. You see, Bartimaeus was trying to make his life better. He was blind and he wanted to see. He was disenfranchised and marginalized because of his physical condition. As he tried to make progress, many of the people around him yelled, be quiet. And in Bahamian vernacular, they said, shut your mouth. As long as Bartimaeus wasn't seeking to better his condition, and remain in his disenfranchised and marginalized state, the people around him said nothing and gave him no attention. Let me reiterate, dogs don't bark at park cars. But he only shouted louder, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. When Jesus heard him, he stopped and said, tell him come here. So they called the blind man and they said, cheer up, come, he's calling you. Bartimaeus threw aside his coat, jumped up, and came to Jesus. What do you want me to do for you, Jesus said. My rabbi, the blind man said, I want to see. And Jesus said to him, go, your faith has healed you. And instantly, the man could see and follow Jesus down the road. In conclusion, Bartimaeus teaches us to never allow your critics to stop you from making progress towards your dreams or your goals. You have to block out the voices around you and increase the voice inside of you. I leave you with this final thought today. Stay in drive. Keep moving forward. Put your blinders on. Let the dogs bark. This is what they do. Always remember, dogs don't bark at park cars. Sila, think and act on these things. Let us pray. Our Father and our God, we praise and magnify your name. To you belong all glory and honor. Thank you, Almighty God, for sparing our lives to see yet another day. We thank you for health and strength. We thank you for being faithful to us, even when we've been unfaithful. Lord, we pray today that you would give us the focus and fortitude needed to withstand our adversaries who seek to come against our progress and our forward movement. Help us to remain firm in our convictions despite what we are facing. Almighty God, give us the courage and the faith to overcome every obstacle that seek to imprison us. We boldly declare today 
that thou, O Lord, are a shield for us. You are our glory and the lifter up of our head. Now, Father, today we humbly ask for your presence to envelop this room. Lord, be with each of these honorable members today as they carry out the people's business. Inculcate them with wisdom and knowledge from on high that they may carry out your perfect will in the earth. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let us pray the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Honorable members, at the suspension, we were debating a compendium of bills. And after that strong word this morning, I believe that we are now ready. As many? The chair recognizes the honorable member for South and Central Andros. Good morning, Madam Speaker. As we wind down the debate on the budget for the fiscal year 2023-2024, I stand in this honorable house with much gratitude. God in his infinite wisdom has blessed me and allowed me to serve the people. As a representative for Mangrove Key, Central and South Andrus, I have been entrusted with the responsibility of voicing your concerns, advocating for your needs, and working towards a progressive Andrus and a better Bahamas. I extend my deepest appreciation to the communities for their unwavering support and unwavering trust. You have shared your stories, your aspirations, your hopes and your challenges, which allow me to understand the unique fabric of each community. Your resilience and strength in the face of setbacks inspire me to work tirelessly on your behalf. I would also like to thank my dedicated team that stands by my side and assists me in serving you better. Madam Speaker, it is a collaborative effort from community leaders and volunteers who partner with me to help shape our visionary future. Together, we strive to address the issues that matter most to you, whether it's creating opportunities for economic growth or working to improve education, healthcare, or infrastructure. In this rapidly changing world, Madam Speaker, we face many challenges and uncertainties. However, it is in these times that our true character shines through. I promise to continue to listen to your concerns, advocating for your interests, and fighting for a brighter future. Together, we can forge a path towards progress and prosperity for all. Madam Speaker, on the eve of our 50th anniversary of independence, we speak about our oneness as a nation. This oneness was reflected a few weeks ago at the beginning of June, as we celebrated many festivals on our family islands. Many residents flocked to nearby islands as a reprieve from the capital, which brought much, a much needed boost to those economies. I am pleased to report that the South Andrus Regatta and Homecoming Festival was one for the history books. As rooms were sold out among the settlements, many persons had to seek accommodation across the South by Passage in nearby Mangrove Key. Madam Speaker, I myself also had to seek accommodation in Mangrove Key for that weekend. Transportation was brought in from Nassau and many persons secured their vehicles on several mail boats. Of course, this bode well as all rentals and private vehicles were otherwise occupied. Six excursion vessels full were executed, all from Nassau. 
The airlines who frequent the island made more than the usual number of flights over the weekend, and charter flights had to be booked for the overages. Of course, the local businesses, food stands, convenience stores, gas stations, and supplementary businesses all felt the positive impact of the extra weekend visitors. Madam Speaker, this was no ordinary homecoming weekend. I believe that forward thinking, that progressive thinking, that vi visionary thinking is a must if we are intent on expanding all of our economies and sharing the wealth that is common to our nation. The impetus for the massive boost in South Andrus was the result of an idea. The idea that just as there can be a major concert in the capital, there can be a major concert on our family of islands. The idea that just as we could bring in local and international artists together on stage in Nassau, we can bring them together on our family islands. The idea that if we, to boost an economy, is to invite an event to that community, then why not do it? Madam Speaker, I believe the people in South Andrus have expanded their vision. Thousands came out to the Leon Lundy welcome party in South Andrus, and they are better for it. Madam Speaker, the member for Cat Island, Rumkey, and San Salvador spoke on the acknowledgement that serving the people is a privilege not to be taken for granted. The recent passing of our pioneers, whether in the local community, like Mr. Leroy Hanna of Love Hill, or a national platform like one Honorable George Smith, is a reminder that service must be beyond self. As we prepare for an historic independence celebration, Madam Speaker, I would like to encourage everyone to reflect on the values, the traditions, and the significance of our nation and its place in the world. This is a moment for us to decide once and for all, are we for the positive developments and advancements in our country, or are we going to complain and gripe about every decision and plan made? It is time for our young people to decide if they will join the ranks of those pushing and advocating for a better Bahama land through public service, or if they will be another apathetic, nonchalant, or dismissive citizen. Someone who plants and tends to our soil, or someone who dreams of a life in another country, without a thought for those who came before us and the work they have left for us to accomplish. With this budget presentation, Madam Speaker, this New Day government lays the framework for our steady course. We can show where we've come from and where we're going. Madam Speaker, this Davis Cooper administration started its administration in a world full of curfews and lockdowns, and has since made progress towards opening our borders and freeing our people from their homes. We were in a world of relational challenges, job losses, food shortages, and financial hardships. We have since made progress by allowing for free COVID testing, business incentives, and agricultural growth. Unemployment rates are decreasing and more visitors are traveling to our country. Our people can truly see a light at the end of the tunnel and feel better knowing that the recent red storm is over and a new day is upon us. <laughs> Madam Speaker, this New Day government has improved its fiscal policy with the reduction of VAT to 10% reductions in custom duties and excess taxes, along with the technological and digital transformations in our government systems. We have improved efficiency and processing for many businesses and individuals. Madam Speaker, information from the National Statistical Institute shows GDP growth in 2022 over the previous year. New Providence experienced a 17% growth and many of our family islands saw changes in their nominal GDP growth. I'm happy to report, Madam Speaker, that Andrus experienced significant economic growth with an historic jump to 6.2% over previous years. Finally, Madam Speaker, the sleeping giant is rolling over. In 2022, 
Andrus recorded its highest ever number of air arrivals via commercial or private planes. In its annual tourism statistics, the Ministry of Tourism revealed that air and sea arrivals to Andrus quickly bounced back from the declines caused by the global pandemic. For stopover visitors, the average night stay was seven and the main purpose was for vacation. The second highest purpose, Madam Speaker, for visiting Andrus with an average of seven nights stay was for honeymoons. The majority of US stopover visitors to Andrus were from Florida and New York. And the majority of the ages of our visitors were between 45 and 54 and also under 12. Similarly, out of all the Canadian visitors to Andrus, the main purpose was for vacation and the second purpose was also for honeymoons. Although children under 12 ranked high in the results, it was found that the majority of Canadian travelers were aged 45 and older. The average night stay for Canadian visitors was 10 days. When we look at European visitors to Andrus, Madam Speaker, we see once again vacationing and honeymooning ranks one and two in proposed of travel. <laughs> the average night stay was 9.4, and the majority of visitors were aged between 25 and 54 and under 12, Madam Speaker. Our visitors from Latin and South America followed the trends of the other regions and had an average stay of 8.1 nights. Their ages were mostly under 12 and 45 to 54. <clears throat> Families are vacationing in Andrus, Madam Speaker, and loved ones. This means that they disconnect from their otherwise daily routines to enjoy quality family time. We acknowledge and don't take for granted those opportunities to provide for their relaxation. We have pristine beaches and water adventures and tours. We have our natural parks where they can appreciate the natural beauty of that great place called Andrus. We also have our cultural and historical sites on Andrus. I recently spoke to the business community in Andrus at the Andrus Business Outlook and highlighted the jump in Andrus's GDP estimates. From 2015 to 2022, the island of Andrus consistently accounted for 1% of the Bahamas' total GDP. However, in 2022, the island's GDP reached its highest level in an eight-year period. Andrus experienced a significant economic growth of 6.2% in 2022 with real estate activities being the primary contributor. And for those who may not know, increased real estate sales is a prominent indicator of a strengthening economy and future income growth. We have seen significant developments and expansion across our larger resorts and marinas. Our bonefish lodges continue to see high gas counts in their annual reports, which is an indication that sustainable planning is necessary for this sector of our tourism product. The all-inclusive resort of Kamalami Key, which celebrates its 25th year in operation, has announced plans for world-class professional tennis and pickleball courts. It is another testament to innovative advancements in our tourist product by industrious business minds. In another example, excellent progress has been made with the renovation of Anders's Lighthouse, Yacht Club, and marina. When completed, we expect that it will offer 20 rooms, a refurbished pool, and a rebuilt marina that can be used this weekend during our Crab Fest weekend in Central Andrus. These are just two examples of the many investment opportunities that have contributed to the success of the Andrusian economy. Madam Speaker, this government has been very focused on the progress of our islands other than the capital. This has been an intentional objective as we understand that a nation which is a collection of islands is only as strong as its weakest link. The attention given in upgrading infrastructures leads to progress for businesses. This leads to new investments and economic growth, which leads to an environment where residents are no longer obligated to travel to New Providence for work, 
but they can if they so choose to. Two airports have been opened since this government came to office with 14 more planned for upgrades. The people of South Andrews await the announcement for a new and upgraded airport facility. Madam Speaker, in addition to the many laws that have been passed by this administration, we have also seen major investments in our social assistance programs and infrastructural developments. This government recognizes the importance of providing a safety net for those facing hardships. We have implemented robust programs that support the vulnerable in our communities. $300,000 has been allocated to the Ministry of National Security for the establishment and upkeep of community centers. $600,000 has been allocated to the Unregulated Communities Task Force. The government has increased its subsidy to the Bahamas Technical and Vocational Institute, BTVI, in the sum of $2 million, which means that over $8 million is available to ensure that the institute turns into a world-class center of higher learning. This year, we have also made accommodations for the highest ever budget allocations to the Ramfley Home for the Children and the Crisis Center in the amount of $300,000 and $100,000 respectively. The Urban Renewal Program has an allocation of over $7 million, which is an increase over previous years. There are also increases allocated for the Elizabeth Estates Children's Home and the Nazareth Center. $300,000 has been allocated to the Be Inspired Youth Program, and $500,000 is reserved for the development of sailing, our new national sport. $3.5 million, Madam Speaker, will go toward the Rent to Own Initiative, and $2 million is reserved for the Straw Market Authority. Madam Speaker, increases in the budget allocations for other programs and projects have been announced by this government. 1.2 million will go to the National Training Agency, 10 million for the redevelopment of the QE Sports Center, and $227,000 will go towards the promotion of Grand Bahama Island, a sum that is the highest ever allocated in any budget presentation. <laughs> Madam Speaker, I cannot leave out family island development. This New Day government has allocated 13 million towards infrastructural, educational, and healthcare projects on the family island. In addition to this, as each constituency receives an increase in their allowance, it is a welcome relief that more work can and will be done on our islands. In Andrus, for example, Madam Speaker, solar lights were installed on the portion of the road that goes from Smith's Hill to the Bluff just before homecoming. This area had a series of curves and no lamppole lights. This was done at a cost of $13,500, which came direct out of the constituency fund to ensure that the residents and visitors can have lighted streets, lighted streets as they traverse throughout the island. Madam Speaker, as the member for Central and South Elutra spoke, he mentioned that there are budget allocations for a junior council program from local government at a cost of $320,000. For Androsians, this is a welcomed opportunity to engage our young people in civic participation and provide them with community service experiences. The program involves the establishment of a committee made up of solely of young people who act as advocates for their peers. This program can allow for our young people to give their opinions and concerns on various community matters and often allow for the development of leadership skills while giving the next generation a voice and a platform. Madam Speaker, I wish to highlight some of the accomplishments we have seen coming out of Andrus or working for Andrus recently. In April 2023, Bamsi announced the opening of the state-of-the-art poultry research and training center. With a country otherwise spending approximately $12.5 million on imported eggs, this center will help in lowering our dependence on imported food while creating a sustainable poultry production program. 
Andres continues to have the privilege of being the first to enjoy a poultry center. And as it paves the way for the other islands, similar facilities will be given. This represents just one of the several important projects that BAMSI has invested over the years. In our schools, we see that the construction of a pavilion at Central Andrus High and the continued construction upgrades at Low Sound Primary in Andrus. Much has been said about the road repairs and rehabilitation of the carriageway, but Redways, Central Andrus, and South Andrus will be pleased with the results of these massive projects. As the member for Fort Charlotte mentioned in his presentation, from Andrus Town to Bearing Point in Central Andrus, the roadway is 47% completely paved with hot mixed asphalt. On completion, the cost of this project is estimated at $15.4 million. In South Andrus, the road works along the main Queens Highway from Dreeks Hill to Mars Bay is expected to be finished at the end of the year at a cost of $8.5 million. Bridges in Fresh Creek and Stafford Creek are on course to be started within the upcoming fiscal year. The cost of the upgrades to the bridge in Fresh Creek is estimated at $35 million, and the one in Stafford Creek is estimated at $15 million. The docks in North Andrus are expected to be completed at a cost of $2.5 million. We also expect the completion of the dock and ramp in Lisbon Creek, Mangrove Key, in short order. A new airport is on the way for South Andrus, and it is my hope that as the details are finalized, I can share more on this in the coming months. Also in South Andrus, a BAMSI office is opening as an extension and expansion of the Institute. A new passport office is on the way also in South Andrus, along with a historical and cultural museum. The multi-purpose gymnasium will be open in this upcoming fiscal year and it is expected to host both local and international teams and tournaments. In Mangrove Key, Madam Speaker, the Port of Entry and Customs Office will open within this fiscal year, making Mangrove Key another international port that services our residents and tourists alike. We have seen upgrades in infrastructure through waterworks and new underground pipes in Mangrove Key is on the way. There will be a newly built Mangrove Key Community Clinic, according to the member for Tall Pines, which will break ground in this fiscal year, Madam Speaker. <laughs> also, each constituency will secure increased budgeted allowances, which are necessary adjustments to ensure that the work is done and no one is left behind. Mangrove Key will have an increase of just under $26,000 from $237,000 to $262,000. Central Andrus will have an increase of just over $48,000 from $475,000 to $518,000. South Andrus will have an increase of $38,000 from $365,000 to $403,000. We are currently working on the Andrus Food Kitchen, which will provide nutritious food to the vulnerable. By addressing hunger, Madam Speaker, the kitchen contributes to the improved physical and mental health and overall quality of life for individuals and families. We are working, Madam Speaker, just yielding results, just results. <laughs> Madam Speaker, I am also pleased to report that the committee responsible for the development of flat fishing has met this year. And it is several strategic goals we hope to see come into fruition. This is a committee that was established in 2017, but met for the first time, Madam Speaker, just this year. On the government's electronic portal called My Gateway, fishing equipment and boats are now able to be applied for duty-free exemptions. After meeting, with the Mayor Wayne Messam from Miramar, Florida, the people of Andrus have been gifted with two police vehicles. And Madam Speaker, I made sure to secure two vehicles for the great member. 
the chair recognizes the honorable member for Marco City. Thank you very much. Madam Speaker, I'm uncertain which um, particular committee the member is referring to as, as when he mentions flat fishing. Um, I'm aware that I participated in multiple meetings with the principals from various islands, and not just me, but persons who we have designated. Um, and we did several things. One is we came up with a curriculum for uh, flat fishermen or fisher persons throughout the Commonwealth of the Bahamas. And it is a program that was being run in conjunction with, with BAMSI. Um, secondly, we examined the regulations multiple times uh, with a view of ensuring that small boutique hotels that were going out with guests had to have a Bahamian on board. Um, it was not sufficient to rent a boat from them, et cetera. So, um, Madam Speaker, if there is a particular committee he's referring to, then I take no objection to that. But certainly, while the Honorable Renwood Wells was in the chair and I was in the chair, that is a community that we have worked with consistently, Madam Speaker. Thank you, Honorable Member. Member for Marco City, I was not referring to the Bamsi flat fishing committee that he made mention of. I was talking about the flat fishing committee that was made in 2017 with some bone fishermen, and they just met this year, Madam Speaker. But thank, thank, you, you. thank you, Honorable Member. Thank you. After meeting with Mayor Wayne Messam from Miramar, Florida, the people of Andrus have been gifted with two police vehicles, Madam Speaker, and I made sure, as the member for Freetown alluded to, to secure two vehicles for the great member for Cat Island, Rumkey, and San Salvador also. This comes as a result of travel and networking opportunities, Madam Speaker. Results, no wastage here. From the allocation of new police vehicles, the Honorable Member for Freetown has indicated that the people of Andrus will receive two trucks. Madam Speaker, we know that favor is not fair, but there will definitely be some favor in which vehicle goes to which community. Speaking of favor, Madam Speaker, as I have stated on many occasions in this house, the banking arrangements are not favorable to Andrus, as in so many other islands. There have been many voices giving perspectives and opinions and reasons and rationale. However, I urge us to take steps to remove hindrances and blockages for our people to own and operate more banks. If we must create legislation to do so, let's do it. I welcome, Madam Speaker, any Bahamian investor who wishes to use Andrus as their anchor or pilot project for a bank to do so. I also applaud the member for Elizabeth, who in her speech gave a remedy utilizing the post office that may bring some banking relief for the islands. The member for South Beach indicated that the Water and Sewage Corporation will invite bids for the replacement of the entire water distribution system in Mangrove Key and extensions to the newer areas. The residents will be relieved to know that the days of low to no water pressure or supply challenges are soon over. Concurrently, the corporation is reviewing its plant in Kemp's Bay and will have a plan to improve the supply between Kemp's Bay to Mars Bay. Again, just results, Madam Speaker. You know, Madam Speaker, I promised my mom I'll stay on script and not, not do just as I'm about to right now. 23%, Madam Speaker. I will come back to this number shortly. 23%, Madam Speaker. Stay focused. Madam Speaker, a very significant economic indicator in our country is land ownership. In the past, we have seen much of our crown land go to public infrastructure, <clears throat> development projects, resource extraction, agriculture, and conservation. Our people have been agitating for access to crown land so that they may own, like they say, or the young people say, or myself, a piece of the rock, Madam Speaker. <laughs> We have heard their voices and the voices of the side opposite. And although we have not engaged in any back and forth, when the all of a sudden pass administration from the side opposite 
has been voicing their opinion on the matter. This New Day government, Madam Speaker, has been working, not talking. <laughs> Madam Speaker, I wish to report that since coming to office, this government has approved 356 applications for Crown land. This time frame is approximately 20 months, Madam Speaker, from September 2021 to May 2023. To put this into context, Madam Speaker, from May 2017 to August 2021, or approximately 51 months, the previous government approved 78. Or that magical number, Madam Speaker, just 23% of what we did in just 20 months. And for the record, we have approved Crown Land applications for Androsians. 39 in Nabi, 24 in Central Andres, and 37 in South Andres and Mangrove Key. That is a total of 100 for Andres. Madam Speaker, in fact, we will be launching a pilot program in South Andrews shortly, as there is a high demand for land. Our approach is to utilize 40 acres and divide them into half acre and acre lots. This will allow the residents to build their homes when all they needed was the land to do so. Madam Speaker, when I consider this Davis administration and the work done on behalf of the people, I concur with the member for Central and South Elutra that used the two words that come to mind, just results. Yeah. Madam Speaker, this budget presents a necessary turning point in our future progress. To advance our nation, we must look towards a common, loftier goal. This goal includes access to standards in living, in education, in business opportunities, in healthcare, and definitely in land and home ownership, Madam Speaker. We are determined as a New Day government to make strategic decisions on taxation, public spending, and investment priorities. The evidence is clear that we are on the right path to maintain and grow our economy, create jobs, attract investments, and enhance productivity. Madam Speaker, as I take my seat, I want to first let the side opposite know this New Day government is a team. There is no I in team, Madam Speaker. Last week, the Honorable Member for Centerville stated that the expenses stated by the previous government was $1 billion below what the actual expenses totaled and is as customary the previous administration threw accusations of falsehood at the member, so he withdrew until such time as he could present the evidence. Well, that is my brother, Madam Speaker, who is a part of this dynamic team. And today, I wish to lay the evidence before the House, Madam Speaker, a document that shows the report from the firm of Deloitte that gives the total expenses reported in the pre-election report approximately $1 billion less than that of the report showing the total outstanding amount owing September 16, 2020. Order, order, order that the document be brought up. Yeah, because I was correct then, I'm being correct now. Say it again. What's it, D? I'm giving up, or you want me to do it on the next week? Same, same, same part. You follow me. You follow me. Same part. Madam Speaker, my. Other than the document you lie on the table. Your interpretation of it was wrong, and it's still wrong. The chair recognizes the honorable member for Sandoval. I yield, Madam Speaker. Madam my Speaker. I need to interrupt my, my, 
My, my good colleague from Southern Hi. Central, Andres, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, with uh, this report now being tabled, at the particular time when I was making my contribution, Madam Speaker, I indicated that I would withdraw until such time that the evidence was presented to support my comments. Yes. Madam Speaker, if this Honorable House is satisfied, I would wish at the conclusion of my colleagues' deliberation to be able to have my comments reinstated on the record in this house. Mm. Would you re repeat those comments for yes. this honorable place, please? Yeah. <laughs> Cut it out. Okay, Cut it out. speaker. Okay, Cut speaker. It out. Thanks, Sinan. You Cut it out. Madam Speaker, uh, go ahead. Yes, <coughs> Madam. Sp oh yeah, we have copies and in color. Yes, in color. It be table. It be table. Madam Speaker, I was saying at that time that they, those on the opposite side, mm. want Bahamians to forget that when they asked about rape in the country. A minister in their administration said to members of the media, a friend told me that there are 12 months in the year. <laughs> Spend the first six months minding my business and the next six months staying out of other people's business and I'll be fine. Don't ask me about rapes. They want Bahamians to forget that numbers provided by the Ministry of Finance for the period ending September 2021 revealed a $1 billion discrepancy from the numbers provided by the Minister's administration in a pre-election report. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Thank you, Honorable Member. Thank you. Could you recognize the Honorable Member, please, go on behalf? Madam Speaker, thank you very much. This one billion dollars was litigated months ago. The allegation that the other side has put was that the Ministry of Finance said that there was one billion dollars worth of expenses that was left out of the pre-election report. The, and they also said that the Deloitte report backed up this allegation. The Deloitte report does not back up that allegation. The Deloitte report specifically says that there was a difference of interpretation of the law of, as to what was required. It also said that the previous administration had a specific interpretation as to what should be included in the pre-election report, and this administration had a different interpretation as to what should be included. It also said that it should be clarified as to what should be included in the report. So it is not true, not true. that the Deloitte report backed up that there was $1 billion exactly. that was not exactly. left in place. Exactly. And to just because you continue to repeat it does not make it true. He's on his feet. He's on his feet. It does not make it true. He's on his feet. He's on his feet. He's on his feet. Excellent. You may continue, Honorable My member from Centerville stood on his feet and gave his opinion until he laid the facts that he's speaking about. I laid the evidence, Madam Speaker. Thank you, Honorable Member. Thank you, Honorable Member. Madam Speaker. Yeah. Hold on, members. There's a member on his feet. Yes, yes. Are you yielding, Honorable no, Member? No, Madam Speaker. Yes, it is, Madam Speaker. What, what, oh. what is the point of Honorable Member? So, Ma Madam Speaker, 
Madam Speaker, the, the member the member made an intervention. We want to know, Madam Speaker, with respect to the to the ruling, the ruling, the ruling that you the ruling, the ruling that you intended to make. I want I want to understand that ruling before I in, in state the, the point of order, Madam Speaker, whether or not that's going to be left back into into the record. No, so so you, you do intend sorry, you do intend to, to rule on that, Madam Speaker? Give me a moment. Yeah. Uh, to, to recognize this young member for us, shall we? Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker. You're not the judge. Members, members. Madam Speaker. Rule 38. Mm -hmm. A member who rises on a point of order shall, not may, when invited by the Speaker or Chairman to do so, state the infringement of these rules on which his point of order is based, then resume his seat. The Honorable Member, Madam Speaker, is putting forward a rebuttal. He first must state what specific rule was infringed. I mean, that, and it says, and, my credibility is not determined by you. Madam, Madam, Madam Speaker, Madam Speaker, all of us, all of us, all of us, Honorable Members, Madam Speaker, all of us, Honorable Members, this is not the party, this is the Parliament and what controls in the parliament. The honorable member may be able, oh please, please. I've, that's not parliamentary language. Lie. Ma Madam Speaker, ma the speaker has ruled. The honorable member is not the arbiter of anybody in this house. Thank you. Madam Speaker, you've invited the member to state the point of members, order. The member could be as petulant as he wants. This is the arbiter, and I'm appealing to the speaker, notwithstanding the rude intervention of the honorable member. Madam Speaker, you have asked the member to state you could be as abusive as you want. Order. You could be Order. as abusive as you want, Madam Speaker. Look here. Member. State your infringement. What rule was infringed, Madam Speaker? Member. Thank you. Please. Honorable Member, thank you for your intervention. But Speaker understands that rule and understands and knows that rule very well. I am asking, I am asking, just how I have asked the Member for Centerville, to retract until he brings the facts. And right now, he has laid his document yes. bearing his facts that will now be entered back into the records yes. of this House. Yes. And then, when the side opposite would have brought the facts, then we will revisit it. Member for St. Andrews, you may continue. No, I have set my rule, honorable member. I have set the rule, and, 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 and. Madam Speaker. Honorable member, I've heard you from your chair, say you need a copy of that so you all can look at it. So don't do that. You can have a copy. Member for South Andrews, I've asked you to continue. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, Mangrove Key, South and Central Andrus supports this budget. This New Day government, this Davis Cooper administration. Good, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, Mangrove Key, South and Central Andrus supports this budget. This New Day government, this Davis Cooper administration, and this all-star team. May God continue to bless this great little nation and this archipelago of ours we call home, the Commonwealth of the Bahamas. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Thank you, Honorable Member Asmini.
<laughs> What's wrong with you today? <laughs> Need a coffee break. <laughs> I'm deaf. Yeah, you could go. <laughs> I give you an invitation. The chair recognizes. Don't make me mad today now. The chair recognizes the honorable member for Seabreeze. Madam Speaker, it is an honor to rise in this honorable place once again to represent the great constituents of Seabreeze. As always, I want to thank the Seabreeze residents for affording me this opportunity to represent you and your affairs in this honorable house. I am truly grateful for the constituents of Seabreeze who meet with me and Team LB on a bi-monthly basis, reach out via phone or WhatsApp, and are always eager to speak with me when I come knocking on their doors. Thank you for welcoming me in your homes and in your hearts, and I look forward to the work ahead to make Seabreeze even better and stronger. If I may, Madam Speaker, I also wish to thank my family, especially my three children, Quay Leslie, Liam Javon, and Layla Marie, for their continuous support. Their recent academic achievements, report cards, graduation, and awards have truly given me a refreshed perspective to keep going and to keep pushing. Yeah. Madam Speaker, my daughter Layla Marie is here with me this morning. She was awarded the Meridian School Class of 2023 Valedictorian and received and she received the Director's Cup for her academic achievement and positive attitude. Madam Speaker, she stood in that auditorium giving her graduation speech, and I must say she presented like a natural. <laughs> to my boys, Quaid Leslie and Liam Javon, Liam Javon was also awarded for his top achievement as the top boy in his class with a GPA of 96.67 and Layla Marie with a GPA of 99.67. To Quaid Leslie, my 17 year old, who was also on the honor roll this year and awarded academic achievement and also named with an honorary mention. Congratulations to him and continue to do well. To my Seabreeze scholars, congratulations to you on a job well done. We will celebrate you and highlight your accomplish, accomplishments and please continue to work hard. Their commitment and excellence inspires me and I am truly grateful for their love and motivation. To my father, who is here this morning, yes. thank you for the morning calls every day. Thank you. <laughs> thank you for the numerous calls throughout the day. <laughs> thank you for the calls all weekend. <laughs> The fussing truly goes a long way, sir. <laughs> to my beautiful mother who's watching, thank you for your prayers. You are truly the wind beneath my wings. To my grandmother, Hyson, my mother-in-law, Carol, thank you so much for your prayers. To my husband, Leander, thank you, thank you, thank you for your love and support. To my apostle, Raymond Wells, thank you for keeping me at the top of your prayer list, sir. I am truly grateful. To my sister, thank you for keeping me on track. Before I go any further, I would also like to take a moment to thank Bahamians near and far for their messages and phone calls, Madam Speaker. The encouraging words truly go a long way. I wanna thank my village for their love and support. It is truly appreciated. Madam Speaker, I am sure everyone knows by now that the Bahamas is turning 50. For the past 40 plus weeks, we have painted the road to 50 with black, aquamarine, and gold. 
across the length and breadth of our Bahama land, Bahamians of all ages have joined in celebration with events that highlight the significant contributions of our people and celebrate our shared achievements. I wish to express my gratitude to the Bahamian people for showing up in their colors, expressing their Bahamian pride, and truly enjoying every experience presented to them. Your feedback, your enjoyment, and your engagement has truly been my favorite part of this road to 50. It has been an absolute joy and privilege to celebrate alongside the Bahamian people thus far. From the Road to 50 race, the launch of our logo and theme, the ongoing 1973 Masterclass series, the launch of 242 Day, Jubilee Day in our schools, the golden Easter egg hunt, the Jubilee Day production, Jubilee, an evening of culture and couture, the golden Jubilee tea party, and just a few nights ago, rush, sip, and paste. Madam Speaker, one of the events that has truly grabbed the attention of many was our 50th on Bay Street Festival. The live performances, the, the variety of entertainment, and just to see Bay Street buzzing with all things Bahamian was an unforgettable experience. I am truly grateful for the creative and hardworking team of the Independent Secretariat and the local organizing committee. Thank you for sharing your time and talents with us to present to the Bahamian people world-class events and experiences. To our vendors, producers, performers, entertainers, support teams, and all who help to make each event safe, enjoyable, and an unforgettable experience, thank you. A special thank you to Permanent Secretary, Mr. Jack Thompson, who has been working tirelessly to ensure our efforts are a success. Thank you, sir, for sharing your wisdom and guiding us on the road to 50. P.S. Thompson, I also wish to express my sincere condolences to you and your family on the passing of your brother. And I wish to thank you, sir, for continuing to show up and push through and be of service to the Bahamian people. Madam Speaker, I also like to wish, I also would like to thank the hardworking administrators of our family island districts and their respective teams and the diligent officers of our foreign missions that have been working tirelessly to ensure that islands and respective cities are equally a part of the Jubilee celebrations. Madam Speaker, I am sure we are all excited for the festivities that await us in the upcoming weeks. I invite all Bahamians to follow the social media pages at Celebrate Bahamas or log on to our website, www.celebrate-bahamas.com for more information and updates as July 10th approaches. Join in the fun, the festivities, and display of Bahamian pride. Adorn your cars with flags, drape your homes in colors, and wear your 50th paraphernalia with pride. It's our independence, and we only turn 50 once. Madam Speaker, if I may, I wish to extend an invite to all Bahamians to attend and participate where possible. In our July 1st Flow Parade, July 1st Bahama Rock All Bahamian Concert with the Grammy Award winning Bahamen headlining. July 2nd, the annual Pre-Independence Beef Retreat. July 3rd through 8th, Jubilee in Pompeii Square. July 5th, a National Day of Wellness. July 8th, party like it's 1973 with the Golden Soiree featuring the Tea Connections. Tickets will go on sale soon. July 9th, all roads lead. <laughs> You'll be there. July 9th, all roads lead to Clifford Park. That morning, go to church. And then from church, have a hearty lunch and a quick nap. Then meet us at the park for 5 p.m. There's nowhere else to be, nowhere else you should want to go. Then grab your seats or bring your seat to Clifford Park. Madam Speaker, 
Sadly, on the road to 50, we lost another one of our senior advisors. We are deeply saddened by the passing of Mr. George Smith, former cabinet member, minister, and member of parliament for Exuma. In the eyes of most, Mr. Smith is considered one of the fathers of the nation. In his most recent civic contributions, he served as special advisor to the celebration of the nation's 50th independence. We treasure all of his contributions to this significant milestone in our nation's history, and we express our deepest condolences to his family and loved ones. I ask for you all to join me in a moment of silence. May his soul rest in peace and rise in glory. Madam Speaker, I am quite aware that when people see the videos, the photos, and events of the road 250, there are usually three responses you would hear or see in the comments. One, there's, wow, we had an amazing time. Or maybe two, wow, this was an amazing event. Sorry I missed it. And then there's three. Wow, why are we celebrating? There is nothing to celebrate. Madam Speaker, beyond political rhetoric and your usual naysayers, I believe it is critical that we address group number three. I know some may say just ignore it, but I quite frankly believe we should face it head on and acknowledge the fact that there are some Bahamians who don't feel that there is enough worthy of such celebrations. I believe it's like celebrating your own birthday. I am sure as you prepare for any personal milestone, you do so with excitement, but also with some degree of reflection on the things you wish you did differently. Things you could have done differently, but equally committing yourself to doing things better in the years to come. The Bahamas, our beautiful country, is no different. We should have, could have, and in some instances, would have done things differently. But it is what it is in those same moments of reflection that fuels us to recommit ourselves to getting it right and doing all we can to be better for the future. I believe this budget does just that, Madam Speaker. In the communications thus far, my colleagues have shared the work that's been done and the work we are doing to strengthen our nation, stabilize our economy, and empower our people. I believe we can celebrate, Madam Speaker, increased funding for urban renewal and second chance program the expansion of BTVI to our family islands, increased efforts for key road projects and airports to enhance our infrastructure in our major islands, increased minimum wage, introduction of Wi-Fi in the parks, introduction of the National Youth Guard, increased funding to NGOs, allocation of funds for a women's shelter and food assistance program, groundbreaking of the Freeport Health Campus, ongoing repairs to, a, to public clinics and health facilities, enhanced support and recruitment in the areas of nursing and education, new saturation patrols and police in crime hotspots, aggressive cleanup campaigns in neighborhood and key public spaces. I'm going to continue, Madam Speaker. Increased opportunities in agriculture yes. with the Golden Yoke Project and enhanced yes. fancy farmers markets. Addressed learning loss post-pandemic through yes. programs like Find Every Child. Mm -hmm. Implementation of home repair and presumption of death legislation for storm effective islands to expedite relief efforts secured $1 billion in investment, allocated $50 million 
for micro, small, and medium-sized Bahamian-owned businesses. Introduce the national trade policy to empower Bahamians' businesses in international trade. Devoted $20 million to supporting small and medium-sized businesses across the family islands. We indeed, Madam Speaker, have something to celebrate. Yes, that's right. That's right. On top of all of that, Madam Speaker, I believe we can celebrate the fact that we have a prime minister and a government that is listening, that is connected with its people, yes. that is proactive and committed to a better Bahamas. Mm -hmm. When I speak to my Seabreeze constituents, they share their concerns of feeling safe, not just as it relates to their physical safety, but the sense of security that their future is safe. Yes. That they can look forward to home ownership and retirement. That their children can feel secure in dreaming big not limited by lack of resources or lack of opportunity. The feeling of being assured that in the midst of life crisis, there are resources available to them to help heal and intervene. The security that you are not alone and that there are people fighting on your behalf, working on your behalf, wanting you to have access to a better, more prosperous life. Madam Speaker, this budget is a part of our efforts in solidifying the fact that this administration is committed to a more secure and progressive Bahamas. We want Bahamians to feel secure in every aspect possible. Secure in the fact that they have a government working in their best interests. There are resources available to them and opportunities accessible and available to all. I personally want the Bahamian people to be assured that this is a government working for all Bahamians, not just a select few. A government who understands the full picture of reaching all Bahamians, not just in Nassau, but in our family islands. The grassroots and the prominent business owners, the foreign investor, and the first-time local entrepreneur, the young professionals, the budding students, and the people in need of a second chance to equip themselves and get a refreshed start at life. This budget speaks to where we are as a people, what we need now as a people, but also speaks to where we need to go. We must, Madam Speaker, move forward and upward to a safer Bahamas with a more sustainable and diverse economy. We must become a healthier Bahamas, and we must strengthen all of our islands as we work together. Madam Speaker, as the High Commissioner for the Bahamas to CARICOM, I wish to further commend this Davis Cooper administration in its continuous efforts in securing and strengthening our reputation, our relationships, and our position within the region and around the world. As our Prime Minister, the Honorable Member for Cat Island, Rumkey, and San Salvador further demonstrated while hosting the U.S. Caribbean Leaders Meeting just two weeks ago. Prime Minister Philip Davis, Caribbean Leaders, and U.S. Vice President Kamala Harris addressed pertinent issues impacting our Caribbean countries, including firearms tracking, energy, food security, climate resilience, and development finance. Once again, the Bahamas is demonstrating its leadership in driving progress on critical issues that impact our nation and the region. As CARICOM turns 50 and we, the Bahamas, turn 50, it is my belief that as a region and a nation, the best is still yet to come. From multilateral discussions, collaborative efforts, and pooled resources, may our region yield positive results, safer communities, stronger economies, and a more united Caribbean. 
Madam Speaker, if it's one thing that's secure, that's my commitment to the amazing people of Seabreeze. Seabreeze, thank you, as always, for your support and welcoming arms. From our Christmas extravaganza to our Seabreeze Health Challenge, our ongoing repairs and our cleanup initiatives, the Easter festivities and monthly meetings. Thank you for showing up, keeping me informed and aware of your needs and affording me the opportunity to be of service to you. I look forward to the work ahead, implement the approved speed bumps, continue paving in identified areas, especially in Salinden Pinland Estates. I wish to thank the honorable member for Fort Charlotte for his approval and ongoing support to ensure the needs of Seabreeze are met in an efficient manner. Seabreeze, we will be installing new signs for major subdivisions and completing our state-of-the-art community center. In my last budget contribution, I had hopes all works would have been completed by now, but I am learning that great things take time and to ensure I present to the Seabreeze constituency only the best, I anticipate us celebrating the grand opening of this community center early 2024. I look forward to a new year and new space for us to fellowship, empower, and strengthen our community. Madam Speaker, on Saturday, the National Independent Secretariat hosted the National Blood Drive in recognition of World Blood Duna Day in both New Providence and Grand Bahama. I wish to congratulate and express our gratitude to our partners, the Ministry of Grand Bahama, the Public Hospitals Authority, the Princess Margaret Hospital Blood Bank, the Rand Memorial Hospital Blood Bank, Doctors Hospital, One Blood Bahamas, Pan American Health Organization, Rotary of Grand Bahama, and Grand Bahama Blood Society. As I sat there watching the people willing to donate blood, the song Get Involved by Dr. Off came to mind. This well-known and catchy tune is a reminder to us all that if you want a better Bahamas, a more secure future, we must all get involved. If we want a cleaner Bahamas, we have to get involved with cleaning up our debris yeah. and properly discarding our trash. If we want a healthier Bahamas, we have to get involved and learn how to cook our favorite Bahamian meals with less salt and sugar, and take more walks by the beach to stay in shape and clear our minds. If we want a safer Bahamas, we must stop cloaking toxic behaviors and traits. Yes. We yes. must seek intervention through trained professionals and agencies to address anger issues, violent tendencies, and abuse. We must also volunteer our time with credible NGOs, civic organizations, and youth centered activities, we must get involved. If we want a more educated Bahamas, we must reinforce the value of educating, education and support our educators. If we want a more creative and diverse economy, we must put our money where our mouth is and support our local creatives, artisans, music musicians, and entertainers. Buy a ticket, Show up to their shows, support their latest collection, get involved. As the government does their part, we have an obligation. As Bahamians, we must do our part to ensure 25 years from now, and even 50 years from now, there is something worthy of celebration. With every decision we make today, at every level, both nationally and personally, we must take on the responsibility that we are shaping the course of our country, our communities, and our family for generations to come. Let's recommit ourselves to a more progressive future. Colleagues, let us in here, in these halls, recommit ourselves to delivering to the Bahamian people a budget and a level of govern governance that secures their future, advances our nation, and makes us all proud to be Bahamian. As I take my seat, I wish to share an excerpt 
from the Jubilee statement that was recited by our students on Jubilee Day, May 5th, 2023, across the Bahamas. I promise to commit to being united in love. I will commit to being a model citizen through love, kindness, empathy, community service, and respect for the rule of law and an abiding faith in God. This is my promise. Let us all promise to commit ourselves to be united in love and being of service to the Bahamian people. It is by our daily efforts, the road to the next 50 years should be smoother, more secured, and more progressive. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Thank you, Honorable Member. As many, the chair recognizes the Honorable Member for West Grand Bahama. Madam Speaker, I am profoundly overjoyed of the incredible report to this nation by my colleagues, their stewardship truly accounted for, their reports on the work in their ministries, the incredible performance of all ministers, and Madam Speaker, all in 22 months. 22 short months. Our colleagues have been able to articulate the vision of our prime minister and leader for national security, food security, social security. Our members spoke, and they have, Madam Speaker, been able to explain to the Bahamian people, not being distracted by those who bark at parked cars. They spoke to the issues concerning this nation while side opposite forgot the issues that are important to this nation. Madam mm -hmm. Speaker, national security, no one will ever forget the visit of the Vice President of the United States of America, Kamala Harris. Madam Speaker, apart from her being the first black woman to sit in that chair. The historical visit had more to do with what she said, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, she came and made a commitment to the Caribbean and to the CARICOM community. And, uh, Madam Speaker, she dealt with an issue that we have long fought with, the importation of illegal firearms in our country. She made a commitment to this nation and to the CARICOM community and that their Justice Department would now put in place an individual who will serve as a prosecutor, mm. who will assist us in our fight. Yeah. Madam Speaker, that to me was more significant than anything else because for many years in this place and in this country, We've argued as to why the United States of America did not do more. We don't make guns, Madam Speaker. That's right. They come from the closest neighbor, which is the United States and Florida in particular. Madam Speaker, that to me was one of the most significant things that happened this year. It was an answer to what the side opposite always asked for. What is your plan for national security? And I noticed and listened that no one mentioned it at all during the last three weeks. No one mentioned that this is now happening and no one mentioned it's happening because of the distinguished member for Cat Island, Realm Key and San Salvador.
national security. We talked about food security. No one could doubt that our distinguished member from Luthra truly has brought sexy back into agriculture. Our member has told us of the plans and all that he's doing, and I found it amazing that Marco City would yesterday simply ask the question that we have been banging on the table, he said. But have we seen anything to suggest that we have seen growth or we have been able to reduce the import levels in the last 22 months? The member for Mark who sat in the chair expects instant mashed potato. <laughs> the chair recognizes the honorable member for Mark uh, Madam, Madam Speaker, if the member is going to quote me, I only ask him to do it correctly, and he has incorrectly quoted me. The question I asked was, in every indice, every area of agriculture you wish to identify, when I was in the chair, we were importing 98% of all items. I ask you to present the evidence where in any of those areas, crop production, livestock production, or any non-food agriculture production, you are able to identify where we have changed the percentage of what we have been importing. That's the point that I made. So don't, don't get vague. Get, get to the point. Marco City, thank Marco City, thank you for making the point, Marco City. That's exactly the point, Marco City. That's exactly the point, Marco City. You expected it in 22 months. And uh, you do not appreciate that the member has been able to lay on the table plans that you will see the results. And if we were able to in 22 months, you would have done it in four years or two years. But it couldn't happen. Didn't happen in two or four years. So the reality about it is that the member has laid on the table and you will be here in another year and you will be here too, to celebrate with the Bahamian people because the member is making plans and as he says, it's just results, nothing big. Just results, just carrying out his responsibility, just seeking to reduce the import levels in our country. That's what he wants to do, and that is what he's going to do. I find it amazing when members talk about housing and members seek to take on the member for Elizabeth, but never once talking about the incredible work that she's doing. And they didn't build a single house. Not one house, not one, can't find none. Four years, not one, not a single one. I find it to be incredibly amazing, but the member for Elizabeth is building houses in Abaco, in Elutra, in Grand Bahama, and here in New Providence. Not one. Not a greenhouse. <laughs> Not one. Not one. <laughs> the member, I find it to be incredibly amazing when they talk about tourism. And they said, we started tourism. We started this rebound. Well, this rebound started and tourism started many, many decades ago. And many decades ago, we built on what was done by the founders of the tourism industry. I served in the ministry, and now the distinguished member for Exuma is the minister, and no one can doubt the incredible work he's doing. More so. I have and had served as minister, but I'd never heard a plan as articulated by the member about the diversification of tourism and how he intends to cause it to make even more for our country, to generate even greater revenue. That's what he talked about. And he said to us, he said, we just getting started. 
<laughs> said, nothing big, we just getting started. He said, we're working for you, the Bahamian people. Yes. But no one could doubt what's going on in tourism all over this country and what else will happen. The member told us here and asked Bahamians to consider, invited Bahamians mm -hmm. to consider entering the industry to help yes. us with the low room count right. that we need. Which minister other than Clement T. Maynard had to do that in this country? Right. Which other minister? Right. No other minister had to do that in this country except now the minister for Exuma and Ragged Island. Right. The member of parliament for Exuma and Ragged Island. No one could doubt the incredible work. And then I hear them talk about Grand Bahama. That's right. I find it to be incredibly amazing, particularly because we have two members who spoke about Grand Bahama. Mm -hmm. And one in particular, the member for East Grand Bahama, talked about nothing for Grand Bahama. What? What? I can't. I found it amazing because they talk about the hotel, they talk about the airport. Oh, wow. But, you know, I just find these things. And the member for Grand Bahama, East End in particular, this is what he said. This is what he said. This is what the member said. This was a story written by the Tribune. And this is, I'm reading it. I'm reading it. I'm reading it for you. It says, the Minister of State for Grand Bahama, Senator Kwesi Thompson, has told Grand Bahamians to ignore the naysayers in response to criticism about the proposed development of the Grand Lucan Resort in Freeport Harbor. Mm. Senator Thompson said the new project is far better than the proposed wind development that was touted mm. by the former administration for the resort. Former yeah. wind development. In other words, something was on the table mm. when we left office for our Lucaya. It was on the table. You mean wow. the same wind group that has gold wind now open here wow. out west? That same group My that you rejected, God. that moved away. Wow. And then you purchased the property. Oh, wow. And then you did nothing after you purchased the property. Wow. That's the problem. Wow. And you told us not to worry. Wow. But look where we are today. So how could you possibly talk about where we are? How is that possible? And then the member for Central Grand Bahama, it's really a joke. <laughs> the member for Central Grand Bahama told us what we ought to do as part of our ingenuity yeah. is consider the tin tub. Tin tub. <laughs> so you gotta be creative. He said, you should jump in the tin tub. You can save some money, take some cowboys. That's what he said. In this place, he said that. That's what he said, in this place. I have my, no, I didn't. I have mine in the back of my yard. I have one. And then, Madam Speaker, and then, Madam Speaker, I listened to them talk about deals. But, and I asked for my chair, but he didn't respond. I asked about the Oban deal. And the member said it was a great deal. He says it's a step in the right direction. That's what he said, not me. Listen. Listen. This, the, this is the member for. This is a member for. This is a member for Central. There's a great deal. It says a step in the right direction. That is what he said. I am Lewis, the member for Central Grand Bahama. I said Central Grand Bahama. Central Grand Bahama. No, no, he said it's a step in the right direction. This is the Obama, you know. Obama. The, 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 the stuff we can't find. Remember, we can't find the documents about Oban still to this day, still lost. But, but I find it amazing that when I listen to them speak about Grand Bahama, I find that to be incredibly amazing because you brought nothing to the table. You discussed this. Oh yeah, you and I sat together. You and I were sitting together, you forget, last week. And at the end of the day, Madam Speaker, the member for Central Grand Bahama was in here talking about what he did for sports and talking about the member who represents us so well from Garden Hills about sports. And I'm asking the question, what happened in Grand Bahama in sports? Show me something. Show me one thing. Nothing. Just like the housing, you can't show me one house, you can't show me one thing. Again. No. Again, no, no. and in 22 months, look at all the work that our people have done. 22 months, not two years, 22 months. 
22 months. 22 months. And then I remember Kalani asking the question about saying that we don't have an agenda, we this, we that, we all the other things. And I heard Senator say in this house last week, Senator spoke about all the things that we have done. And all I know is I took out the legislative agendas and I see that in our 22 months we done passed 60 pieces of legislation wow. and y'all ain't do that 22 months, man. Not that 22 months. This is our, this is yours, by the way. This is what you did in four years. This is what you did in four years. This we did in 60 years. This, this is what we did in 22 months, 60. 60, 60 in 22 months. Doesn't matter what it is, Mr. Member from Marco City. Okay, so y'all ain't do nothing then. So y'all ain't do nothing in your four years. Talking nonsense. There's nothing in your four years. And then the member from Marco City yesterday talked about termination of people. Termination of people. Termination of Bahamians. But he forgot about the 2,500 that were terminated. And, and the member forgot, you forgot what your attorney general said. Your attorney general said that it saved the Honorable Carl Bethel. The Honorable Carl Bethel said that these job cuts have saved the government $75 million. $75 million. There's no problem. But yesterday, Marco City, you said, or you were saying that you had nothing to do in your ministry. Oh, well, not you. Oh, it wasn't you. It wasn't you. I, okay. It, uh, fine, I agree with you. I agree with you. But yesterday, you also, you also called a shaggy. You also called a shaggy. It wasn't you. It wasn't you. It wasn't you. It wasn't you. I heard you quote Shaggy yesterday. It wasn't you. We understand. It was them, but not you. We get it. I got it. I got it. I got it. I got it. Best Grand Bahama. What did he quote? What did he quote? A Shaggy? I don't quote. What did he quote? A Shaggy? He quoted a Shaggy yesterday. Said it wasn't. Said it wasn't me. It wasn't me. Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker. And then public service. Hundreds of Bahamians. When we came in, all these years, can't get confirmed, can't get proper salaries, can't get promoted. Look at what, if I fired anyone? I can get to that in a minute. I can get to that in a minute. Look at the work done by the Ministry responsible for public service. Yes. Look at what the Minister Global Role has done. Look at what she's done. Look at what Ellen for the many years. For the many years. Four years went by. Four years went by. We had persons who were recruited for the immigration department sitting down and can move. You had individuals who in ministries can get confirmed. You had persons who came on the work program can get a proper salary. And what has happened? I'm going to get to you in a minute, sir. I'm going to get to you in a minute. I'm doing much more than you didn't know the ministries you had. I'm going to get to that in a minute. And I can let to that in a minute. Because in what I've done in social services, my brother, you've had two ministries, and you can't show me one thing. Thank you. 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 Don't go there. Don't go there. Don't go there. Don't go there with me. I'm talking about public service right now. And with public service, she is taking care of the individuals in public service all throughout the system. Getting what they deserve. And getting confirmed. And thank you, Minister. Our people are happier today because of you. Member for Golden Gates. Because of the work that she is doing, incredible work that we should be celebrating. And the member for Central asked the question, are the people better off? Let me answer them. Yes, they are. Madam Speaker. <laughs> Madam Speaker, the reality about it all, Madam Speaker, is in 22 months, the progressive liberal party, the Grave Davis, 
administration has done more in 22 months than any government and your government that you served in Davis Cooper, if you will. Davis Cooper, if you will. Doesn't matter, I think it was the member for Andros who said it earlier today. There's a team here. There's a team. There's a team. There's a team. We all together. This is a team. This is a team. And this is a team. This is a team. The member, the, the, the member, the member, the member, the member for, the member for Marco City, the member for Marco City members. is living in La La Land. You having dreams. Members, order. You having dreams. I will, members. I can tell you. I have allowed the country to hear everybody. Now let the country hear from West Grand Bahama, please. I want to hear him too. Madam Speaker, Madam Speaker, they have a difficulty with the team. The member for Central Grand Bahama tried to come up with another slogan the other day about the PLB. But this is the PLP all the way. And it's the PLP one team. And it's the PLP with one leader. One deputy leader, one team, and we work together. No one could question that. No one could question that. We don't. We don't have situ. We don't have a situation now, party. No, no. It's a unified organization. We were the first party in this country, and we have delivered. Madam Speaker, all the way. I want to talk about staff. Because, Madam Speaker, I'm so very pleased with the work that the minister, the member for Golden Gate, has done. Yeah. Yeah. I, I really can't say more or too much about it, Madam Speaker, because it's never enough. Because when you walk into a ministry, as I did, yeah. and you meet individuals who have labored, yeah. who do the hard work in this country, who roll up their sleeves every day and go to work, and with people who are dealing with yeah. difficult situations every day and appreciating what they have to do, and many not being confirmed for years. Wow. Many, Madam Speaker, go in and getting their degrees mm -hmm. and still nothing. still nothing, but to work every single day. No one, and I say this without fear of contradiction, there are no harder working people selfless people, people who have a heart and care than the staff of the Ministry of Social Services and the Department, none. I see the acting director is with us today, surprisingly. Surprisingly, she's been able to leave her office, Ms. Fernanda, please stand in this place. Let us recognize you. Please stand. Madam Speaker, they work from their heart. We can never pay them for what they do. They don't have time off. They don't have days off. They don't have weekends off. M Minister Miller, if you wish to call them on the weekends, you can call them too to give your daughter a break sometimes. <laughs> because they are always working, always caring for the people, always looking out for the children. And as Alden and Allen once said, the little darlings, calling when there are issues concerning the children, thinking about how do you put someone in a place, a shelter, when there's none left, worrying about what are we going to do, thinking about how are we going to find something, a voucher or something, just for someone to have something to eat. I'm a speaker, they work hard. They work hard, they labor. And because of their work, Madam Speaker, I'm so inspired. I'm inspired just to look at them every day and to realize that many of us who, because this ministry has not been in the spotlight, we don't know the work that they do. They do incredible work, not only here in the capital, Madam Speaker, in every island of the Commonwealth of the Bahamas. They are present. And Madam Speaker, for what we've been able to do so far, and we have more to do, inclusive of confirmations, 
inclusive of new facilities for them to work, inclusive of providing benefits that they didn't have before, inclusive of ensuring that they can get hazard pay for the things that they do, Madam Speaker, inclusive of being able to, when they're going from one island to the next, jumping on the boat, we didn't give them an allowance, Madam Speaker. And we forget that the work that they do, when the hurricane is gone and we're, everyone's at home, or when the fire is over, they're on the streets. They're with the people. They're providing assistance, Madam Speaker. And the more we can do, we must do. And that is why I wish to applaud the member for Cat Island because he understands. He knows what it is. And every day his work is about ensuring that we can take care of the people. But to take care of the people, we got to take care of the staff. I'm so very pleased with their work, Madam Speaker. I'm so very pleased with what we're doing, opening new offices and changing facilities in some of the family islands. I want to thank the permanent secretary, Joel Lewis. He and Daryl Hall, who's with us again today. Daryl, please stand. They deal with the facilities of our ministry, and they've been all over this country finding new facilities, making sure the facilities are in place. And the permanent secretaries had to do it. And he's gone from island to island, and we're looking for those places to ensure that our staff has a comfortable environment. We don't want them to be in an uncomfortable environment, Madam Speaker. The work we ask of them, the demand we make of them, we must give them more. And that is what they're trying to do, make it much more comfortable for them to deliver the service for the Bahamian people. Madam Speaker, the disabled. When I listen to the member for Central Grand Bahama talk about sports, I was so, I, I wondered how come there's no mention about the Special Olympics? How come no mention about the Special Olympics team? Somebody wrote what he said, he just said it, because he had no mention about that, and they just went off last week, Madam Speaker. They're in Berlin right now, Madam Speaker. The point I'm making, Madam Speaker, is he did not mention it. That's the point I'm making. I thought if you care about sports, you care about people, I'm going to hear this. I didn't hear it. It's my view. I'm entitled to my view, Madam Speaker. I'm entitled to my view. Marco City can't tell me how to think. You can think for yourself. Well, he ain't with that. Well, that's not my responsibility. That's not my responsibility. That's not my responsibility, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, the member didn't. He was talking about sports. Okay. I'm talking about sports now. And I'm saying there's no mention of the Special Olympics team. And no mention of the fact that they have already won medals. Okay. That's what I'm talking about. Wow. What do you mean now? We should be celebrating that. We should be celebrating that. You talked about sports yesterday. We should have been celebrating that. You, to you as a red herring, I heard you talk about sports yesterday. <laughs> the reality about it all, Madam Speaker, the team is in Berlin. The team is in Berlin. And the same recognition we give to the other athletes, the same recognition we give to the able athletes, we should be given to the Special Olympic athletes. The Chair recognizes the Honorable Member for East Grand Bahama. Madam Speaker, the Member for Central Grand Bahama is not in the House. I think it is very unfair. To make, to make a statement that the member did not make any mention of Special Olympics. Because I know the member for Central Grand Bahama. I know that the member for Central Grand Bahama cares about the, dis the, the disabled. I know that he cares about the disabled athletes. So to make that statement, to try and to put aspersions focus. on him focus. is an unfair thing to do. It is unfair. So, Madam Speaker, I will speak for him to say that he does care, we care. and we all on this side care. That, Madam Speaker, I am fully aware of the member for Central Grand Bahama love for sports and love for people. I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is that the member did not mention it. And what I'm saying, Madam Speaker, is if it were some of the more elite athletes, we would not have forgotten. We remember the elites, but we forget the Special Olympics. 
That's what it is, man. It's because this is a part of my responsibility, sir. In case you don't know, see now. Part of my responsibility is the disability. And the reality is we're very proud of that team, a 13-member team, seven Special Olympic athletes and six coaches. And uh, we won a bronze medal in the 200-meter female race, Kathleen Romer, bronze at the World Games. Bronson Aaron and Austin Green, also known as Mr. Big Stuff, won a silver medal in double bowling. Very proud of that, Madam Speaker. Yeah. Because we don't celebrate them as much. We celebrate others, but we don't celebrate the disabled. And they're at the games in Berlin and performing and representing our country. In fact, Madam Speaker, they were there carrying the flag, Darren Forbes. That same flag of the Bahamas that we heard Seabreeze talk about today. Hakur, Maine, Brack, and Gould, the proud flag of our country. And I'm so very proud of the work that they're doing, Madam Speaker. And uh, we must never forget them. Because we can, and we do have the tendency to do so. I want to thank the commission. The commission has been working incredibly hard. And they're seeking to carry through our responsibility is uh, for the Equal Opportunities Act passed in 2014. And uh, two members of the commission are with us today. We have the commission uh, chairman who is here, Lenny Bethel. We also have Desiree Clark from the commission. Please stand. These are the hardworking individuals who work with the disabled. In January of this year, they began a registration drive. And they began with 383. Today, they now have 1,400 on that data bank now. 1,400 persons who have disabilities, who many of us didn't know and many of us didn't perhaps have an appreciation for. But the reality is they're building the data bank because we want to know all the individuals with disabilities. And they're doing an incredible job, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, we have been to visit buildings and sadly to say, of the buildings that we've visited so far, some 50 we've been doing inspections, and just one of the buildings is properly uh, fitted for the disabilities, and that is the Epworth Hall. The only, the single one, with everything in place, Madam Speaker, which tells us something about our country, which tells us something about our facilities, which tells us of the urgency and the things that we need to have done. We need to have it because the disabled have a right. And we're signatories, and we want to thank again. We're back to you. Uh, you have done well to employ. Some 50 have gone through training, and now 50 disabled are working. Working. They have jobs, Madam Speaker. And I want to thank the minister for the work that she's done. Incredible work to advance the efforts. And so it's all intended to cause for the inclusion because that's the general theme, inclusion. You can't say it and don't do it. And for many years, we have not moved with haste. Now we're moving with haste. And we have individuals who are deeply concerned. We intend to get more facilities, Madam Speaker. We intend to cause for more public relations to be done. Public relations because, Madam Speaker, we have to ensure that they understand their rights, one, and we have a greater appreciation in our country of the disabled and the numbers in our country. The numbers in our country, we don't know. We've gone to some islands, Madam Speaker, just to be so surprised to find out that they're the disabled. And we have to find ways in which we can assist. And that's the work we're trying to do. I also want to thank the member for Cat Island, the Minister of Finance, because their budget have gone from 147000 to 247000 Incredible jump in the figures. Thank you very much, sir. And we need to have more to do the work. And we are going to start our public relations program very shortly. Debbie Bartlett has been brought in to assist us in the work, and Debbie Bartlett is here with us today. <laughs> Wanted to bring in a veteran broadcaster to help us to get the messages out. We have 
for the most part, Madam Speaker, the space has been empty. The airspace, we've had dark spots, nothing being mentioned about what happens in this ministry. No one knows what's going on. No one knows the work that our people do. We're not getting messages to children. We're not getting messages to women. We're not getting messages about or to the disabled. We've created and caused for an app to be created. But, Madam Speaker, more is needed. We must have more on the media. We must utilize our space more. So we've asked Debbie Bartlett to join us to help us develop a communications program that would help us reach more children. Madam Speaker, one of the stories that I have been reading and books that I've been reading recently is a book as to why rape? Why do men rape, Madam Speaker? And the story tells of, it's a book written by an Indian journalist, an investigative journalist. Her name is Tara Kunshal. And uh, the book speaks of why men rape. It speaks of the fact that it might be because they were molested when they were young by women or by nannies. It speaks of, Madam Speaker, the impact of television. The impact of television. Learned behavior. Watching stories on TV all the time and wanting to experience. Madam Speaker, but we in this country don't know why. We've not done the data. We don't understand what's happening. Why are young men and why we have the incidents increasing in our country? That's what we intend to do, Madam Speaker. We want to find out the why. The why, because only when you find out the why are you able then to deal with the issues. And so we have to create, and we have to fill the spots. We have to cause a voice to be heard on ZNS and all the other radio and television stations in the Bahamas. We have to use social media, Madam Speaker. We have to use TikTok if we must. We have to use the billboards. We have to use ways in which, in which to reach our people because, Madam Speaker, if you look at television every single day, you don't see anything countering the negatives that we see. We'll read and we'll hear some of the stuff, but what do we counter? And how do we counter? Madam Speaker, the only way to deal with it is for us to fill the spaces. And so we've asked Mr. Debbie Barlow to come and join us to be a part of our program, Madam Speaker, because it's very important. In two months, Madam Speaker, the Bahamas will be hosting WAM. Women are coming and ministers are coming from all over the uh, Commonwealth to discuss many of the issues that they face. And you'll see some commonality in some of the issues they face, whether it's women uh, in violence, whether it's women in technology, whether it's women in empowerment generally. They're coming to the Bahamas for that meeting, Madam Speaker. We're looking forward to it because it's going to help us in getting to the bottom of the issues that we have to deal with. How do we deal with these issues, Madam Speaker? How do we put them behind us? Because I don't want to be in a society where I have to build buildings and I have to build shelters and more and more and more. I'd like to get out of the business, business and I'd like to build less and less and less. But unless you change the society, unless you change the minds and the thinking, you're gonna find yourself having to continuously build. And we have to reach those people, Madam Speaker. We have to reach the young people today. We have to reach those young people that the Ministry of Education is dealing with today. We have to reach those young people, Madam Speaker, that will make a difference in our country tomorrow. But we must talk to them today. We must put programs in place today to make a difference tomorrow. And so we're looking forward to that conference, Madam Speaker. We're looking forward to the work that will happen in the Bahamas and what will happen as a result of for the rest of the Commonwealth. And so that's going to be an exciting time, Madam Speaker. I'm sure you're going to be there and you're going to be a part of what we do. And we're looking forward to it, Madam Speaker. <coughs> Madam Speaker, I want to turn to Grand Bahama. I'm from Grand Bahama, Madam Speaker. And Grand Bahama, to me, that's my home. It'll always be my home. No matter where I go, no matter what I do, that's home. And Madam Speaker, I've had a difficulty from I was a little boy with the Hawksmoor Creek Agreement. In fact, Madam Speaker, when I was 16 years old, I wrote a letter to the then Prime Minister, Sir Lyndon Finley, because I heard a speech once where 
the one of the chairman of the uh, Port Authority talked about uh, if you don't like what we're doing here, then you can go to another island. He said you can go to Andros if they had better water. I was insulted by that, Madam Speaker. Deeply insulted by that. And Madam Speaker, I have always had a problem. So when I hear the Prime Minister say change, yes. change, oh, yes, Prime Minister is now following what Salinden said about bend or break. Now he is change must happen. Change must happen, Madam Speaker. And we're forgetting that when the Hawksburg Creek Agreement was signed August 4th, 1955, it was a bad deal. Horrible. It was a bad deal. Terrible. We gave away my land, yes. home of my birth. And Madam Speaker, I want to read from a book. And this book is written by Dame Doris Johnson. It's called The Quiet Revolution, Madam Speaker. And I want to read a particular portion that comes from the Washington Post. The Washington Post, Madam Speaker. And this is what the story says. Contrary to the debonair island tycoon image depicted in the Bahamas handbook, Wallace Groves, who purchased Freeport, is shown in the magazine article as a financial wizard who spent two years in a federal penitentiary for mail fraud. Before trial, his bail was set at $125,000, then a record for federal counts in the United States of America. After finishing his sentence in 1943, Groves went into the lumber business on Grand Bahama Island. Seeing the potential for the development of the island, Groves sought out the best lawyer he could find, Sir Stafford Sams. The latter quickly fell in with Groves' grandiose plans and helped mightily to guide through the legislature the Hawksburg Creek Act, one of the most peculiar, peculiar agreements ever concluded between a government and a private individual. The post goes on, Madam Speaker. The Hawksburg Creek Act virtually made Groves the emperor of Grand Bahama, empowered to do pretty much as he wished with 211 square miles of the 430 square miles that compri comprise the island. He was required only to build a deep water port and to bring an industrial and commercial enterprise. The government sold him 150,000 acres at $2.80 an acre. Wow. Wow. Many of which he later resold for as much as 50,000 an acre. Mm. His enclave was given freedom from Bahamian taxes until 1990. He was given the total power to levy license fees on anyone who wanted to do business in his domain. And he was given a strong say in banishing everyone who displeased him through use of the Bahamian government's no questions asked deportation procedures. The story goes on, Madam Speaker. The phenomenal growth of Groves' empire, however, all this is mainly for the whites. The Negroes, for the most part, live outside the enclave in wretched settlements like Eight Mile Rock, a shanty town of 10,000 or more people without running water, sanitation, or telephones. The Freeport itself, the article continues, Groves and his corporation owned most of the land, the harbor, the airport, the public utilities, the taxi company, and almost everything else affecting the life of the island. He gets up to 10% of the gross receipts of the supermarkets, the theaters, and other enterprises. Much of what remains is owned by Groves' friends in the United Bahamian Party, the white merchant princes, who call themselves the Bay Street Boys. One of the main beneficiaries of all the commerce is Sir Stafford Sands. As the lawyers for Groves and many of the Bay Street Boys, he collects legal fees on nearly every important commercial transaction on Grand Bahama, a take that might total in the millions. Madam mm. Speaker, I live with that every day. Yeah. And I live with that every day, Madam Speaker, because there was a time where in Grand Bahama, we had a supernumerary police force. Mm. Not the Royal Bahamas Police Force. It was a supernumerary police force that did not answer to anyone except the authorities in Freeport. Their immigration rules were different. They had a commercial enterprise bill 
that we sought to bring back to this parliament in the last term. Where they can bring anybody in, they can start work, do anything they want to do. 14 days automatic. And you become automatic. Same bill. Same bill. We sought to do it again. And the reality, Madam Speaker, the reality, Madam Speaker, is we were never intended to be in the Freeport area. Never. The reality, Madam Speaker, is this. The reality, Madam Speaker, is this. In Freeport, Madam Speaker. In Freeport, Madam Speaker. In Grand Bahama, Madam Speaker. And in the... In Eight Mile Rock, Madam Speaker. We had no modernity. That is why many would not understand or not even have an appreciation as to why we are building the administrative complex in 8 Mile Rock, Grand Bahama right now. That is now completed. They won't understand that, which is why there was no urgency to get it done by the last administration. But now it's finished. Yeah. We're now putting it. Madam Speaker, we had no high school. There were two ladies who fought for the 8 Mile Rock High School. And another one was not built until now that we're building another school in the 8 Mile Rock area, Madam Speaker, in Holmes Rock. Been left out, Madam Speaker, for years. Because the economy was centered in Freeport. The truth is, when they this came up with the idea of the free zone. It was the first in the world. The 3,500 in the world now. The difference in many parts of the world, and this is where the change comes in. The difference in many parts of the world is this. It's not run by a private company. Yes. It's run by governments. That's the difference, Madam Speaker. And we're at the point in this country, Madam Speaker, we're at the point in this country that Grand Bahama does offer a future and a great future for this country. But it must have an involvement of the government of the Commonwealth of the Bahamas. It must, Madam Speaker. I heard them talk about the islands and talk about the economies of the islands and what is up and what is down, but no one ever stopped to think about how do we grow the economies on the islands. The prime minister, the prime minister, the member for Cat Island was the first minister of finance to bring that into this parliament, all the islands. Very first one. Very first one. No one ever did it. Very first one. Show me another one who did it. That's the minister of finance sitting right there. No one ever broke it down. No one ever did. No one ever broke it down. Go find it. Go find it. Go find it, man. No one ever did it, Madam Speaker. The reality is this. When we look at each island of the Bahamas, we can determine how each island can contribute to the GDP. Grand Bahama should be contributing much more to the GDP. It cannot be correct, Madam Speaker, that you have the container port and you have the shipyard, you have all those companies, the industry in Grand Bahama, and they don't contribute that much to the GDP. Cannot be right, my Madam Speaker. And I remember in this place, when I asked the question, I was told that our hands are tied. When I asked the question, why are we getting 50 cents per container? 50 cents. Wow. 50 cents at the container port. 50, and I asked the question, in this place, hands are tied. Madam Speaker, the reality about it all is we should be changing it. The reality about it all, Madam Speaker, is that is where we are. Because more of that should be coming into our coffers to help us run the country. Because we cannot talk about we have to have a tax or we have to have a levy, we have to do all the rest, and not appreciate, well, you have to find ways in which to run your country. And Grand Bahama does, Madam Speaker, offer that potential more than anything else. And so I stand by the Prime Minister, the member for Cat Island, Jerome Keynes, and Salvador, and the position he took. 
Stand by his position, Madam Speaker. Strongly, strongly. And no one's confused in this country except those who wish to be confused. Because the reality about it all is it's been a long argument. And when I hear them talk about bend or break speech, and I realize they didn't even under, they talk about bend or break speech. They talk about Salindians bend or break speech and don't realize how and why it happened. Yes. Had nothing to do with Salindan. The bend or break speech was caused because of a letter written by Eddie and the future son that was printed in the Tribune newspaper. That's what it was, Madam Speaker. And the reality, and the reality of it all, Madam Speaker, he was complaining. Eddie and the future son was complaining that he was trying to bring someone down for some work and was told that they couldn't live in Freeport because they thought he was black. And when they found out that he was not black, they said, oh, maybe we can find a place for you. Wow. He wrote a letter complaining. That's how it developed, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, Madam Speaker, there's, there's, there's a reality about this. It's a story to be told that we don't tell the whole story because we have some who would look at favoritism. I don't, Madam Speaker. I've held my position, I've held my position for years, and argued my position for years, Madam Speaker. Argued my position for years, Madam Speaker, because I don't have to be apologetic to anyone. No one. In fact, many would not understand how the Progressive Liberal Party was founded in Grand Bahama because of the Hawksbill Creek Agreement. That's how it was founded in Grand Bahama. Yeah, I hear what you're saying. I hear what you're saying, but you can't stick to one thing at a time. You're all over the place. You're all over the place. Yeah, well, we're taking care of our people. We can we taking care of our people every day. Every day we take care of our people. More than you ever took care of anybody. We take care of our people every day. We take care of our people every day. We take care of our people every day, my brother, and we will. But I will never, unlike you, I will never use the poor to stand up and celebrate. Oh, look what I'm doing. We are doing the work because we must. That's our mandate. Action speaks louder than words. That's what we do. We take care of the people. We take care of the people. Working for the people. And we can take care of the people every day. And never will we do that. Never will we do that. Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker. Yeah, right. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. Well, well, he could argue that. We do have a problem sometimes putting the money on the cards. cards. We do have the problem sometimes but we would not have had the problem had they not changed it. Had the former administration not changed it. We did have the RISE program, that they stopped the RISE program, went to the PROMISE program, so there's a proxy issue at times that we have to fix, and we're working it every day. We're working it every day. Working it every day. We're fixing that every day, Madam Speaker. We're working that every day. That's what's important to me, Madam Speaker. And there's no issue about that. And our staff works every day to do it. And we when we read the issues. We we, we deal with it every single day. No, I know you wouldn't. We, you know you I know you won't. I know you won't. I know I know I know what the concern is, you know. I understand that, you know. I understand that at the end of the day, no one in our country, no one in our country who's hurting is gonna be left behind. Not a single soul. Not a single soul. Doesn't matter who it is, where they're from, where their color is, where their politics is. Not a single soul. And we will deal with it every day. Whether it's shelter, whether it's health, whether it's uh, health care, we deal with our people every day. Whether it's food assistance, we take care of our people every day. And that's all we have to do. That's our job. That's our job. That's why the budget increases here. I noticed y'all didn't say nothing about the budget decreasing. Oh, but it, but it did, did it decrease? Okay, okay. I know the ministry of, I know the ministry responsible for um, social services. I know social services, the numbers have gone up. 
Oh, we have to go for the extension. Madam Speaker, I now move for the extension beyond the one o'clock hour. Second. <laughs> Thank you, Honorable Member. It has been moved and seconded that the business of this House proceeds beyond the 1 p.m. hour. As many are in favor, will remain seated. Those opposed will stand. The motion is carried. Oh, he has all day. The Madam Speaker. Of this House will now be seated beyond the 1 p.m. hour. Madam Speaker. <laughs> Madam Speaker, as I as I as I talk, talk about Grand Bahama, Madam Speaker, <laughs> our job, as we talk about Grand Bahama, Madam Speaker, I am I am more than confident, and I am very pleased that the Minister of Grand Bahama is leading an initiative to try to change things and better things to do. She does not have an easy job, Madam Speaker. Right. We had four years of nothing. And when you have four years of nothing, you gotta try to build something. Yes. And so now she's building, Madam Speaker, and she's doing what she must, bringing people together trying to create new opportunities for our people, and she will, Madam Speaker, yeah. because she has a full government working with her and behind yeah. her, That's and right. that will make a difference, Madam That's Speaker. Right. Yeah. And we could all want to have new airport, new hotel, everything else we could want to have tomorrow, mm. Madam Speaker, and we will get better tomorrow, because those, those on the other side who sat idly by. Idly by. Sat idly by. Sat idly by. Bought the hotel. Bought the airport. And now, and they ain't do nothing in all the time. They ain't do nothing in all the time. Oh yeah, and 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 and, and yes. Yes, 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 yes. We are working to get it done. No, 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 we will get it done. But you bought it and sold it without a plan. You bought it and sold you bought it without a plan. You had no plan. You had no plan. But you were in here yesterday talking about plans. You got a plan, you got a plan. As you said yesterday. Where was your plan? Yo, that's why you were there. That's why you can stay there. You ain't coming over here. You ain't coming this way. No, 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 no. We go. Oh, we can get it done. Oh, we can get it done. You don't have to worry about that. We can get it done. Madam Speaker, let me now turn to independence. Let me now turn to independence, Madam Speaker, so that I could um, join the member for Sea Breeze in a celebration. Yeah. Madam Speaker, downstairs we are paying tribute earlier today to George Smith. George Smith served our country with distinction. He was a member of this house. And Madam Speaker, I just wanted to segue into independence by quoting something from Sir Lyndon. And this comes, Madam Speaker, on March 8th, 1972. And this is when we were gearing up. Prime Minister is addressing the nation. He says, this is going to be a massive exercise in which I will need help to help me coordinate the program from district to district and island to island. I've invited George A. Smith, MP, the representative for Rollville to become my parliamentary secretary. He has accepted and was sworn in today at Government House. That's when he entered the stage, Madam Speaker. And Madam Speaker, in her book, she is quoting, this is Dame Johnson, and she's quoting from an independence rally, July 1971. And she talked about the Honorable Lady Hannah. The Honorable Lady Hannah said, more and more people are waking up to the fact that the only salvation lies in the unity of this country in complete nationhood. And if we have the courage and strength, we'll make the country a unified and powerful nation. At the same rally, Prime Minister Pinley told the gathering that one of the benefits of independence was the ability of a government to take advantage of opportunities without having to ask someone 
to take advantage of opportunities without having to ask someone else. And then, of course, another member, she quotes George Smith, representative for rural village Zuma, gave his definition of nationhood and youth conference. He says, it is a formation of the national personality, the national identity. And for us, it will be a very real sense, the rebirth of Bahamians. Yeah. And George Smith. George Smith lived it, Madam Speaker. George Smith was never satisfied with just okay. He wanted always to be better. He wanted us to achieve all that we could. And he spent time constantly, no matter what conversation you had, how we can improve upon what we do. And so, Madam Speaker, as we will say farewell to him tomorrow, we do say farewell to one of the great men of our country. One of the great men of our country who contributed significantly to the Commonwealth of the Bahamas. And Madam Speaker, when I spoke with students in West End recently, I asked them each to tell me their thoughts about independence. I wanted to know from them how they saw independence and what they believe would make a difference in our country and how they can contribute to the Commonwealth of the Bahamas. And Madam Speaker, like all Bahamians, they feel, they care, they love the country. And I'm always trying to find ways in which to cause people and young people in particular to get involved. Madam Speaker, I wish to read one or two of the youngsters because I believe it's important. Marvin Eve Mills. She says, the National Pledge shows me that I'm not ashamed to be a Bahamian because I pledge my allegiance to the flag and to the Commonwealth. So if you are ashamed to be a Bahamian, try to be confident in who you are because you should be proud to be a Bahamian and say the National Pledge and pride. And if you show respect to the National Pledge, you will believe in it. And it should unite all of us in love and service. The person who wrote the National Pledge, Reverend Philip Bramming, I owe him so much. He's from a youngster, fifth grade student. Another, Kevaja Ellis. What does the national anthem mean to me? It means or makes me feel like a Bahamian every time we sing the national anthem. It makes me feel free. It's a kid. In 1973, the Bahamian flag raised, the people of the Bahamas marched and sang. Every time we sing it, I feel proud to be a Bahamian every single day. Kali Kupa, to me it lifts up your head to the rising sun, Bahama land, means to be proud to be a Bahamian and proud to be who we are. March on to the glory, to me means to prop up your country, march with confidence, and represent our country with pride and confidence. Your bright banners waving high means that we show Bahamians and the world how proud we are of our country. These are young people, Madam Speaker. Young people who are pledging their allegiance and love to this country. Madam Speaker, that is why as we celebrate the independence, we must celebrate it with vigor, with determination, we must celebrate it with the knowledge of tomorrow that our country is going to be even that much better because of the route that we've taken. And so Madam Speaker, I think our colleagues have done well in this debate. They've been able to articulate and cause our people to understand the road that we've traveled has been not the easiest road, but they've been able to achieve so much in 22 months, Madam Speaker, 22 months. Many have not that, done that, and no government has shown that sort of aggression, that sort of progress in all aspects, in all spheres of our growth and our development. And to the Prime Minister, I wish to say to him, the words of Martin Luther King when he came here in 1958. 1958, when Martin Luther King came to the Bahamas, he spoke at Randall Fox's rally. And he said to the Bahamian people then that you've got to learn how to fly. He said, if you can't fly, you've got to learn how to run. 
So if you can't run, you got to learn how to walk. And if you can't walk, you got to learn how to crawl. But whatever you do, he said, you got to keep on moving. Prime Minister, we got to just keep on moving. We just got to keep on moving. And if we keep on moving, we're going to get to that place. And this new day will be a bright day for all of our people. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Thank you, Honorable Member. The Chair recognizes the Honorable Member for Marco City. Uh, thank you very much, Madam Speaker. The document I'm going to read from Madam Speaker has already been laid, um, and uh, therefore we would not, we'd not offer to lay it. Uh, but we would like to correct, uh, correct the record, Madam Speaker. The member for South and Central Andrus read into the record from one portion of the report, Madam Speaker, by the Ministry of Finance Review of Pre-Election Report and Accounts Payable, the, uh, the Executive Summary, March 8, 2022. So, Madam Speaker, the, the accusation made was that the Free National Movement omitted $1 billion uh, from the, that was, that should have been in the pre-election report, um, and that we, we failed to account for it. I believe that, uh, that uh, again, the member for East Grand Bahama, a former Minister of State for Finance, correctly put on the record, Madam Speaker, uh, the fact that there was a difference of opinion between the then senior officials, inclusive of the policymakers as well as technical team at the ministry, uh, that certain aspects need not have been in the report. And in the actual report, Madam Speaker, it stated, the law only requires, Madam Speaker, that the arrears that the arrears, you can go to page six and seven. The arrears uh, only require, only that the arrears and payables of central bank, be, of, of the central government be laid. Only the arrears and payables. Second, let, let, me, let, me complete, let me complete what I'm saying. We did not leave, Madam Speaker, we did not, we did not leave, we did not leave one billion dollars worth of bills behind madam speaker those items those items madam speaker on pay madam speaker i i listened to him when he spoke i expect to say what okay madam speaker the items on page seven that was listed by by the member they were not obligations and they were not payables so there was no requirement madam speaker there was no requirement, Madam Speaker, for those items, those unbudgeted items, Hold to on, be Honourable in Member. the report. Yeah, fine. The chair recognizes the Honorable Member for Cat Island, Rumkey, and San Salvador. Read the, the, member, the, you member, read the law. You got it on your phone. The member, you know, all. Honorable members, Honorable members. Honorable members. No, no, I, I, I do not hold out that my voice is more important than any voice in this house. You have a voice, or, or any voice, the, whether the voice is coming from either street, over the hill, wherever it is, my voice is no more than that. But what I want to say is that, you know, the character of the, of the member is continually revealing itself. It does not match with his words. It does not match with his words at all. I say now that he is being very disingenuous by suggesting that there was not a bill, a near a billion dollars outstanding, right? And that, and that report, the report speaks to that. He's saying that there was no outstanding. There, there was the, the, the report. One of the members, one, of members, one at a time. The report, one at a time. The report, the report, the report, the report speaks to the, 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 the assertion made by us was that there was over a billion dollars in debt that was not recorded in the report, the pre-election report. That, 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 um, that report confirms that. No, 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 it confirms that. Now, what is happening, what has happened, is that, that the then technical people, there was an excuse given as to why it was not recorded. And that excuse was, 
there's a misinterpretation. This is how we interpret it. That, that, that's what it says. No, 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 no. The, 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 the report says that. The, the report says that. The report, you just said it. No, 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 no. Please. No, 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 I, I, no, no, I, 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 I read the report. I know the report says. Madam Speaker, we, 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 what I'm saying, Madam Speaker, right? That report says that there was over a billion dollars that was not, a near billion dollars that was not included in the election report. That's what it says. Wow. Now, now, and, and we and we revealed that, right? We did just revealed it, and we just didn't want to take it from the acts. We hired an independent accounting firm to to tell us. Why that? It's to, to look at, look into it. They look into it, and they confirm yes, there was this unrecorded sum that was not included in the report. Let's accept that. Yes. Yeah. Then what they went on to say, in attempting to understand why it wasn't, it wasn't record. It was not recorded because the then administration believed it should not have been. But that was their belief. We said it should have been. And that's why, and that's why the report says, and that's why they speak to that, that there was this misinterpretation. There was an interpretation issue. Well, that's, the, that's for you all. What I'm saying, but, don't, but, but I, what I'm saying is that the report confirms. Right? The, the report confirms that let me read the numbers. <laughs> on page on page seven of the report, right? On page seven of the report, based on the information provided by the Ministry of Finance, with subsequent adjustments, the unbudgeted obligations as of October 14th. 2021, total $821 million, $821 million, dollars which comprised the following amounts. And they listed, right? And then, then they said that in addition, there's also an additional sum of 167 which adds it up to 989 thereabouts, right? Now, well, what was included, what was, what was included, right? Which was, but th that sum was not in the report. And so what I'm saying, but they, they confirmed that that was all owing. Let us, let us agree. There was no Okay, fine, fine. Members, right, members. Right, right. Right. Let, 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 you know, this, this is not, we shouldn't be arguing about this, arguing about this though. Let me tell you why we shouldn't be arguing about it. Let, let, let's, let, let's, let, 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 let's be calm and let's be thoughtful about this. Right? Let's, no, 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 listen now. Let, 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 let's listen this. I remember too. Let's listen this. Right? You are saying that those sounds were outstanding, but there was no requirement to record that in the report. Is that what you're saying? That's what the law says. 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 Where the law says that? No, no, no. No, no, no. No, no, no. no, no, no I'm saying. <laughs> Look at the last paragraph on page seven. Look at it. Read page seven, man. All I'm saying, well, no, no, look, I, as I'm saying, let, let, no, no, let us, let us agree. First of all, let us agree that these sounds were outstanding. Yes. That's the point. Right? And, and, huh? oh, oh. No, no, okay, fine. You never, so you never disputed that the sum, it was never, you never disputed that those sounds were outstanding. Right. The next question then, were those sums recorded? The answer to that was, no, it wasn't. Your answer to that also is, well, it was not required to be recorded. So what's the issue now? What's the issue is? What we're saying is, that's what you did. You left that amount, and you're wrong to do it now. So, Madam, so, so Madam Speaker, 
I remind, Madam Speaker, I remind the general public and members in this house. When election, after election passed, the Prime Minister was the first to raise this issue. When the Prime Minister raised this issue, it, it landed like a ton of bricks in the public domain because he gave the impression to the general public that the FNM, they could not find, in fact, was the context in which he made the statement. They could not find one billion, the article, Julie. They could, no, one billion dollars. So, Madam Speaker, the, the, the context, the insinuation by the member for Kett Island, Rumkey, and San Salvador. I, I listen. I listen carefully to the long to the long lecture. The insinuation was that the free, that this administration could not find this one billion dollars. Remember, this report was not laid then, Madam Speaker. This report was laid in a subsequent discussion. Member for Kett Island, Rumkey, and San Salvador. And that's because it, 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 what it did is it set off a back and forth that there was no $1 billion that could disappear out of the public record by the free national movement. That is the context and the backdrop of this discussion. That's how we got fast forward to the report and the difference of opinion between former senior officials and present senior officials on whether by law it was required to put in place the, why don't you listen for a second as we listen to you whether or not the arrears or payables that we should have included in the report more than the arrears and payable we accept the arrears they ought to be stated the payables they ought to be stated the other items madam speaker the Ministry of Works, for example, let me, give you an, let me give you a practical example. The contracts that are being signed by Ministry, by ministry of Works, Ma Madam Speaker, contracts, contracts, Madam Speaker, you do not, let, let me finish, I'm not, I'm not going to yield. Let me finish the statement. Let me, I listen to you, let you listen to me. I listen to you, listen to me, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, Ministry of Works, we're now we're talking about arrears and payables. Arrears and payables are required to be reported. That's what our understanding was, all the senior officials, finance and former policymakers. What was not required, Madam Speaker, what was not required were the contracts that were signed in Ministry of Works that had not yet been completed. What was not required, Madam Speaker, is the invoicing that had not even arrived to government yet, Madam Speaker. What was not required is the 167,000, 167 million, Madam Speaker, was not due until 2022, Madam Speaker. So I'm saying all of the items, all of these items listed on page seven, all of these items listed were not required as a part of the report. So the, so, the, so the Prime Minister, the Prime Minister is seeking to mislead the public. And we do, so again, Madam Speaker, two members are on their feet. Okay, no, ma Madam, Madam Speaker, two members are on their feet. So, so, so Madam, Madam Speaker, the member for Kett Island is once again seeking to put this this insinuation on the public on the public record. He has now modified his position. His original position is they couldn't find this one billion. Now all of a sudden so it is simply obligations. Ramkin San Salvador. I reject the characterization of my assertion in respect to this matter. But that I but I, I could say but unequivocally that the member is being disingenuous, yes. mm. completely disingenuous, mm. and I know that East Grand Muhammad agreed me. And that's why he's quiet. Now let me just go, now let me read, let me read page six. Oh, you, you, you don't agree? Oh, I said that you, all right. Oh, okay, well let you and I agree. All right, no, Madam, Madam Speaker. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Now, I will get to you, East Grand Bahama. I will get to you. Let's just allow him to finish on page six. Okay, let me, let me read page six. six. And then you, uh, 
Then you can tell me whether you agree or not, right? I, I, I just want to put, I just want to expose your member for what he is. Don't let him put all right? it in Now, Don't let him put uh, listen, now let us all appreciate, let us say what the position is, right? Yes. What we are saying, what our assertion is, yes. is that there was near a billion dollars, billion dollars that we met when we came in that was, that was not accounted for, no, hold on, that was not accounted for and was not contained in the pre-election report. Now, is that right? Huh? Right, yeah, yeah. No, I, I want us to agree. No, no, no. no, no. no. Honorable member, member, allow the member to continue. Not accounted for, not accounted for in the report. Not yeah, yeah, yeah. Honorable yeah. member. Yeah, no, no, no. okay. Uh, let, let, let me start, let, let me start, uh, let's see if I can break it down more simply. A pre-election report is required on fiscal conditions, right? And that is supposed to state uh, what the liabilities and what you owe, right? What I'm saying is that that was underreported by near billion dollars. That's what I'm saying. No, 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 no. Listen to me now, please. Honorable member. Please. Right? What I'm saying, it was underreported by near billion dollars. And he just said he agreed that a billion dollars was owed. The only issue I thought was, was whether or not it should have been included in yeah. the report. That's what it is, right? Where it should have been included. Now, let me just go to, to, to them. Let me just read the report, man. Let me just read it. No, you went through it. No, you excluded it. First of all, the, the, the report is required by the Fiscal Responsibility Act, the then Act of 2018, right? And, and what it speaks to and so, so look, follow me. So you, you won't say I misreading you. Follow me. No, 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 you don't read it. No, no, no. Well, if, no, no, you didn't. You didn't. You didn't. You didn't. Right? Honorable members. The third. Honorable members. The third schedule. The third schedule of the Fiscal Responsibility Act outlines, and this is the law you speak into, outlines the content, the content for a pre-election update report. Right? Section B. Roman numeral eight calls for, quote, outstanding stock of arrears for all government entities, including showing separately all new unpaid invoices since the stock of arrears was reported. The same is applicable for media reviews. Now, here is the key, what I was trying, I kept saying, and you, I don't know why you're dancing, but here's, let me just read it. There are fundamental differences in the interpretation of this section between the former senior leadership responsible for the reproduction of the election report and those responsible for producing current reports. That, that's clear? We understand what that means? Do we understand what that means? Yeah, I'm talking to you. I'm talking to you. Because you don't speak. You have not spoken like you do that. You, can, you don't speak. You, you're not speaking like you do that, right? No. So, so now, let, 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 me, let, me, let me finish reading. No, I, no, no. So, well, that's what's what, colleagues. 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 Members. Colleagues, Members. colleagues, yeah. colleagues, was I not, what, 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 did I not say that at the end of the day, did I not say that at the end of the day, did I not say and continue to say that at the end of the day, it falls because, of, I did say that it falls because of some differences in interpretation, did I say that? East Grand Rapids, didn't I say that? Yes. Oh, well, well, whatever you call it, difference in interpretation. Yeah, so that's what I, okay, so you have that, right? See, if I, if I interpret it one way and you interpret it next way, I can say you misinterpret, just like you could say, right. Okay, so we understand what I mean then. So, so, so why y'all will make a distinction between differences of interpretation and misinterpretation? Now, I know, I, no, I never said anything with breaching the law. I say it was not included. Now, so let let's, let me let me read further, right? 
right? Because you clearly didn't understand what you read. For the pre-election report, former senior leadership believes, listen to this now, senior, former senior leadership believes that it should include the stock of arrears and any unpaid invoices that, that have become arrears for central government only. That's what the previous um, leadership believe. Former senior, se but, but listen to this now. Former senior leadership expressed that this report should not include total payables. That's what was the position then. Yeah, no, that's what, see? Mm -hmm. I, see I, they wanted to hide some me. Yeah, so I'm, yeah. So I'm reading what the report is saying, <laughs> right? No, you set up. I, I, was, I didn't want to go down this route. Like it means. No, no, that's all that's the thing it means, right? What it's saying, see, what the senior leadership said, that this report should not include total payables. That's what y'all thought. Y'all also thought it should not include any amounts for state-owned enterprises. Mm. Now, now look here now. Even though you said, even though you said that it should not include it, you still ask for it. But why you ask for it if you didn't think it should be included? And that's what the report says. Even though information was requested from the SOE and amounts to include it. Now, now having excluded <laughs> having excluded total payables, having excluded um, amounts for state-owned enterprises, you all came up with the fact that <coughs> the arrears, the stock of arrears, as of August 27, 2021, total 100, and, what is 108, um, that's 1.108 million, 805.9.43. That's what it came up with. That's what it says, right? Now, now, that's what that's what y'all wanted to show the Bahamian people. When in fact, when you go to the the page that I read, that's page seven now. What page seven says? That was six. One point one. See, then then you go the page page um, seven. Right? Which then speaks to, it should have been eight. That's the other page. A six. <coughs> yeah. And then we speak to the request for information to strike the current payables position. Right? Now it asks for all obligations and commitments. That is the current capital state owned, which are not included. And this broader view, right, speaks to about 821 million, 520,000, 520,000. That's the difference. That's what you're left off the report. That's what we're talking about, which you agree was Owen, and that it was not included. That's, all, that's what the point was. So what's the argument about? We say you're included. You say that um, you, didn't you didn't include it, but you say you all didn't have to include it. Yeah. Well, we say we say you should have. You could you could still you, you could still you could still hold on to the fact that you believe it should. You know, no 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 you, 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 should, you should have. So we didn't have to run all to this, but you, because so so that's what you could do, right? That's what, yeah. Yeah. No, no, now let's see, let me go to the last paragraph now. I said, it is our view that pre-election, see now this is before election, so you gotta make sure the books look good. You know what people know. That's my point. Yeah, that's the point, right? Yeah. You got the point, uh, uh, Angleson. It said, in our view, pre-election and other periodic reports and updates to be meaningful. In other words, to be meaningful should provide a reasonable assessment of the obligations of government. You see, to be meaningful. But y'all didn't want it to be meaningful. No. Y'all wanted it to be, I could go as far as to say, y'all wanted it to be wanted almost to be deceptive. Y'all wanted to be low so you yeah, could, low. Look, look what we're doing, we owe no money. That's what we did. But boy, thank God for September 16th, 2021.
Huh? Thank God for that. <laughs> See, and then it says, <laughs> and then listen to what they say now. The stock of arrears should be reported as stated in the FRA. See, they, they, now they agree with our interpretation. Not yours, they agree with ours. For all government entities, which for us, Will include the, you know, the state-owned enterprises. It is also our view that any significant unbudgeted obligations should be brought to the government's attention in a timely manner. That's what they say. If you're going to be meaningful, if you can be transparent, and if you can be honest. Yes. Thank you, honourable member. <laughs> Uh, uh, pardon me? Okay. East Grand Bahama. Madam Speaker. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I am always more, more than. Oh. Now, th this is a long discussion. Ma Madam Speaker, I'm not going to And I will long. give you two minutes I'm not gonna be to, to make a I'm not, I'm not comment be because this could, um, I mean, a baby could understand that, but um, this could be wrapped no, up. Madam Speaker, I'm not going to be long. And, um, Ma Madam Speaker, the, the Prime Minister had said in this, originally said in this, and this was what this side had taken issue with, that we had breached the law as to what should be included in the pre-election report. That is not what this report says. This report says that it was a difference in interpretation, and if there was a difference in interpretation, and we on this side still stand by that interpretation, Regardless of what your accounting firm has said, we on this side still stand on that interpretation. And we had included in the report everything that ought to have been included in the report. And that's the point that we wanted to make and make sure that it was on the record. We did not breach the law, that we put what the law obligated us to put in the report. Thank you, Honorable Member. The Chair recognizes the Honorable Member for West Grandma and Liberty. Thank, thank you, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, I now move that the House stands adjourned, uh, suspension to Monday, June 26th at 10 a.m. Thank you, Honorable Members. It has been moved and seconded that the business of this House be suspended until Monday, June 26th. 2023 at 10 a.m. As many are in favor will remain seated. Those opposed will stand. The motion is carried. The business of this house stands suspended until Monday, June 26, 2023 at 10 a.m. All rise.